then when the, we will start playing, you know the example position is just below. So the aircraft behind me is an experimental aircraft which we have been flying for the last four years. It's a completely battery powered, fully electric, vertical takeoff and landing jet airplane. So today we saw a test flight of the aircraft um, where we've been flying very closely uh, to the bystanders and, and the visitors because we wanted to demonstrate the low speed capability of the aircraft and the maneuverability. So we've been flying slower than a normal conventional aircraft could fly. Of course, in the aircraft visually. So, it will, it will for, for example, today in Pilos flight, today uh, we have to go with heading 290 to the west. Then, before the border, we turn left to be parallel to do the first pass, parallel to the runway. Wir fliegen würden für wahrscheinlich eineinhalb Jahre mindestens zurück. Und danach sind dann weitere Tests zu machen mit äh, ist weit weg. Jetzt natürlich der Testpilot oder so nicht. Aber ähm, im Prinzip bleiben die so lange wir fliegen in Spanien. Das The next step for us as a company right now is that we start the assembly of our serial production version. Uh, so we have an airplane with this technology uh, that is going into serial production and certification. And this we will start in the final assembly uh, in December this year. And next year we will do the first um, piloted test flights for the certification of this aircraft. So, yes, these airplanes are meant to help avoid the climate change. This is why they are fully battery powered. And that is a big part of the motivation for us as an organization uh, to help making aviation sustainable. And the airplanes are designed to cope with relatively high heat, up to 50 degrees Celsius.
the average person uh you know, you know i can see it being kind of like 2030 you know is when we will see this sort of uh you know air taxi service uh coming to market um you know, you know there are people who are looking to commercialize flights in 2025 or 2028 so when it really you know it comes to market so you know, as a you know, as a kind of real world solution kind of might be 2030, uh, you know, but not, I've previously worked you know, in, um, you know, in some of the driverless car research, you know, and we've been saying it's, uh, you know, it's kind of 10 years away for driverless cars for the past 20, 30 years, you know, so it's always one of those kind of like movable deadlines, you know, and I think it's got, you know, it really is linked to whether people want to use the products and services, you know, if there's demand from people, so it'll, you know, it'll be sooner than 2030, you know, and if there's no demand, you know, or no need, you know, then it will be after that time. Okay.